Berberine is a very popular supplement that's been making rounds online. Some people call it nature's ozempic, and others nature's metformin, because it has benefits on weight loss and blood sugar management. Well, I've been taking berberine on and off for a few years, but a few months ago I took it every day for 30 days. And in this video I'm going to share with you my results regarding blood work, weight loss, and energy levels. I was actually quite surprised by one particular result. So make sure to click a like and subscribe for future videos about living longer and staying healthier. Berberine is an alkaloid found in barberry and other plants. It has many interesting effects such as it lowers blood sugar, it lowers cholesterol and triglycerides, it stimulates GLP-1 which is the mechanism by which Ozempic works, it lowers visceral fat which is the harmful fat around the organs, it lowers inflammation, and it fights senescent cells which are called the zombie cells. This all sounds quite amazing, but does it actually work? There are quite a lot of actual meta-analyses of human clinical trials showing that berberine improves various health conditions such as metabolic syndrome, obesity, insulin resistance, and other cardiometabolic risk factors. These are some of the highest quality of evidence we have. Now I don't have any chronic diseases, I'm already lean and I'm already healthy, but I wanted to try berberine for a longer period of time consistently to see if I get any additional benefits. And mechanistically speaking, I'm also interested in the potential longevity benefits of berberine that has to do mostly with the cell senescence and activation of other longevity pathways. Let's get started with my blood work and I'm going to cover the most relevant biomarkers that are affected by berberine, such as lipids and blood sugar levels. I did a first test in August last year and I started taking berberine in mid-September until mid-October. Then I did the second test in the beginning of November. Here are my results. My hemoglobin A1c, which measures your average blood sugar over the past few weeks, went from 5.2% to 5.1%, which is a small improvement. My total cholesterol dropped from 170 to 157 milligrams per deciliter, which is quite a good decrease. My LDL cholesterol dropped from 100 to 93 milligrams per deciliter. And my HDL cholesterol also dropped slightly from 58 to 50 54 milligrams per deciliter, which isn't that significant. My triglycerides dropped from 49 milligrams to 40 milligrams per deciliter. My ApoB, which is a high risk factor for heart disease, dropped from 73 to 72 milligrams per deciliter, which isn't a significant improvement, but it's already in the lowest risk category. And my inflammation levels as measured by HSCRP didn't change, and they were both below 0.2 milligrams per deciliter, which is the lowest risk. So overall, my cardiovascular disease risk factors improved slightly, at least the cholesterol part and triglycerides, but not the other ones in a significant manner. But it could also be because my blood results were already quite good in the beginning. To be fair, I also lost a little bit of weight during this time as I was doing more zone 2 cardio, and I lost maybe one kilogram of mostly fat. So it's not a perfect experiment, and I didn't control for all the variables, but I really didn't change my diet and exercise routine significantly. The meta-analyses of clinical trials on berberine do find that berberine could reduce fasting blood glucose by about 14.8 to 15.5 milligrams per deciliter and hemoglobin A1c by 0.63 to 0.73 percent, which is significant. However, a 2021 meta-analysis of randomized controlled trials concluded that berberine alone isn't superior to metformin in lowering blood sugar. So that kind of supports my own experience with berberine. I didn't see a significant reduction in my blood sugar levels. And I didn't take metformin to compare it with. However, the studies on cholesterol and lipids do find that berberine is quite effective and more potent in lowering cholesterol and lipids than metformin. Meta-analyses from 2022 and 2023 concluded that berberine supplementation could improve cardiometabolic risk factors such as lipids, insulin resistance, and anthropometric measures. The doses used in these clinical trials range from 900 to 1500 milligrams per day. I was taking one gram of berberine a day, so 1000 milligrams. And this kind of fits the same pattern you see in the clinical trials that this particular dose would result in a decrease in cholesterol. Let's talk about weight loss. I did lose a bit of weight, specifically fat mass, during this time. I went from 81 to 80 kilograms, or even 79.5 at my lowest. However, I was already low body fat before, but I did get slightly leaner. For weight management, a 2020 meta-analysis of randomized controlled trials found that berberine supplementation significantly reduces body weight, PMI, waist circumference, and inflammation levels. Berberine was seen to decrease body weight by 2 kilograms, waist circumference by 1 centimeter, and BMI by 0.47 kilograms per square meter. So technically speaking, that also corresponds with my results. I lost about 1 kilogram of weight, my waist circumference decreased by 1 centimeter, and my BMI also dropped by about half points. But again, this was probably me doing more exercise and maybe losing some weight through calorie restriction, but I didn't, you know, reduce my energy intake that much, and I didn't increase my energy expenditure either that much. So 
there was few things that could have affected the results other than the berberine, in my opinion. The studies comparing berberine to Ozempic find that berberine isn't nearly as effective as Ozempic, and Ozempic results in weight loss 10 to 20 times greater than berberine. So I think it is wrong to say that berberine is nature's Ozempic, because that's like comparing silver coins to gold coins in terms of monetary value. Ozempic is a much more powerful weight loss management drug than berberine is. Of course, Ozempic might have a lot more negative side effects, specifically around muscle loss, but that's what you would expect on any severe calorie-restricted diet or any form of severe weight loss, not just with Ozempic. The reason you might not see that much muscle loss with berberine is because you don't lose that much weight with berberine, and the amount of weight loss compared to Ozempic is very small. I didn't notice a loss of muscle, but I did lose maybe about 5-10% to of my strength, which could have just been because of the weight loss and energy deficit. There is also interesting effects in terms of berberine inhibiting the growth pathway in the body called mTOR, which is responsible for muscle growth. In animal studies, berberine has been seen to decrease protein synthesis, so I don't think it's actually a good idea to take berberine every day if your goal is to maintain muscle and even build it. It might be worth it if you have severe dyslipidemia or hyperglycemia, but otherwise healthy people who have their blood work already in the normal and optimal range might be worse off by taking berberine every day. I'll quickly cover my dosage. Like I said, I took 1000 milligrams per day after dinner. I didn't like taking berberine on an empty stomach because it made me a bit more nauseous and kind of dizzy because probably my blood sugar levels dropped too low because of taking the berberine. So taking it with food is, in my opinion, a better solution than taking it on an empty stomach. Ideally, you would want to not take berberine after resistance training because it hinders protein synthesis like I talked about. But it's safer after cardio or hit intervals. You could also take it before lifting weights and it's not going to have any negative effects on muscle growth. Overall, as you saw from my blood work, berberine had a slight improvement in my lipids and cholesterol specifically. My blood sugar and hemoglobin A1c didn't change that much, but the lipids did, which is what you also find in the clinical trials. During this time, I did lose some weight, but it wasn't a lot, and I can't say it was because of the berberine. How did I feel during this time while taking berberine? Like I said, if I took it on an empty stomach or if I ate very little carbohydrates, then I did get a bit nauseous because of the hypoglycemic effects of berberine, but I didn't notice any other sensations. My muscle mass stayed relatively the same. I didn't notice any muscle loss, but I did notice that my strength decreased slightly, but that could have also been just because of the weight loss. And my cardiovascular performance wasn't affected by berberine at all. Berberine is generally considered safe. It's not super expensive, but it's not as cheap as something like creatine. It's not superior to metformin or ozempic in terms of diabetes or obesity management. So if you have these medical conditions, then consult with your doctor. Otherwise, healthy people don't gain a lot of benefits from taking berberine. It might have a slight improvement in your blood work depending on how much you exercise and how many calories and what kind of a diet you follow. But the improvements are quite small. And I don't think it's going to have any significant effect if you take it like very infrequently. You probably have to take it for a longer period of time consistently to see those benefits. So taking it once a month or once a week probably is not going to work. A few months after this experiment, I also took melatonin every day for three months. You can check out that video next. Other than that, thanks for watching this video. Make sure to click a like and subscribe to future videos about living longer and staying healthier. My name is Seem. Stay optimized, stay empowered.